Spurn Point is a unique place in the British Isles. Geographically, it's a sand spit and it extends from the Yorkshire coast to the Humber estuary. Like all spits, it's a dynamic environment. In other words, it's constantly changing. And Spurn at this period of time is probably going through its most dynamic period in its history. This is the story of why this place is so unique and why the current period is such a period of dramatic change. The point has long been a favourite of fishing enthusiasts and on many a Sunday morning the tramp of boots can be heard as the fishing folk find their isolated spots along the seashore and set up their positions facing out to the North Sea. It's not uncommon either to see a figure suddenly appearing to quietly sweep the mud flats and shoreline with his or her binoculars in their search for the birds that frequent this isolated environment. People from the Humber region are all familiar with the lighthouse that has become almost an iconic landmark for the area. On a clear day, it can be seen for many miles around the Humber estuary. The busy shipping lane of the estuary also has reason to welcome the sight of the old lighthouse because Spurn is the home of the Humber lifeboat, the only permanently manned lifeboat in the country, and the Humber pilots. Spurn is made of a series of sand and shingle banks, held together with mainly marram grass and sea buckthorn. But then, that's true of many similar areas. So what does make this place different? It's the fact that first the Victorians and then the Ministry of Defence used the point to build sea defences. The former to protect the growing city of Hull and the latter as a strategic defence point to protect the country against attack from Europe. These man-made defences have been responsible for halting the natural processes in spit development and fixing the position of the central part. Sand spits, normally a feature of deposition, usually move over time with the action of the waves, moving and shifting the deposited sands. But now that the sea defences have been abandoned by the MOD, the dominant process is one of very active erosion. This is because the defences are crumbling and are escalating the rapid and destructive erosion process. Their presence, instead of one of protection, now makes Spurn a very fragile place. Over the period of the year it took us to make this film, change has been so dramatic that we have sometimes found it difficult to orientate ourselves along the different pieces of coastline and see where we filmed on the previous visit. We have witnessed dramatic changes, brought about by the enormous erosive power of the sea. In front of us is an area of massive sea erosion, and incredibly, that sea erosion has taken place over the last five months. Five months ago, the area that we're looking at was dominated by a cliff, similar to the one in the distance. The massive slabs in front of us are the remnants of the old road along Spurn, which was undermined by the sea and which then collapsed. Beyond the broken slabs, the wooden structures remain, the groins and supports for the concrete military defences, which have been battered and beaten by the sea, and now that's all that remains of them. When we first visited Spurn, this area here was covered in a smooth line of fine sand. But over the period we have been coming, we have seen that sand completely removed by the sea to expose boulders, chunks of concrete and all sorts of debris dragged by the sea along the coast. Then we've seen it transformed at high tide when it's been covered by breaking waves. And now, ten months since our first visit, huge amounts of sand have once again been deposited and to an even greater depth. We're actually being pushed back here against the, uh, the sand dunes by what's quite a high tide. I mean, it's actually 7.5 metres. But the effect of it is much less than was expected. 
because the wind is from the west and most unusually on this side the sea actually appears calmer than on the other side so although it's high and you can see it gradually creeping up the beach to the old established dunes it's not got the erosive power that many of the tides have that actually hit spurn so despite its high 7.5 meters it's not being quite as erosive as many of the tides normally would be i think the the management team on sperm were expecting a much more dramatic impact from this tide today than what we're actually getting. can clearly see how the sea defences were constructed. The horizontal bands of wood tied together by very strong bolts, they're still there. And then behind those layers of wood, we have sandbags packed on top of each other. Now those sandbags will probably have contained a mixture, a dry mix of sand and cement, which over time have solidified, and that will have made a fairly secure barrier behind. On top of that, you've got the solid concrete. So in fact, for many years, these were very good sea defences. The walkway that I'm on now looks solid. And it's very difficult to actually imagine how it gets from this to the collapse we have behind. This over here is how it happens. The sea will gradually work into nooks and crannies loosen those sandbags that we've just been talking about and sucking in and out it actually brings them out and leaves the overhang and once you've got an overhang like this it really isn't going to be very long before that collapses the state of this particular area i would imagine thinking back to what's gone on in the last six weeks it'll only be a couple of weeks before this collapses and then what happens when the edges collapse is everything behind starts to go so that means that all the hard defences are in a state of crumbling disarray and then they actually expose behind those what we thought were solid fixed sand dunes and you can see that despite the fact that the marron grass is holding them once the hard defences are removed then really the sand dunes are very very fragile indeed and it will not be long before they quickly follow the solid material into the sea.